Okay, we're going to go ahead. Hey, Amen. We're excited here. I mean, there's a lot been going on. We missed you last week. Hey, Amen. Yes, we we uh, we watched it. Was it uh, Elder Noah uh, came with a tremendous message about seat? Hey, Amen. He talked about. Amen. What is it? Sabotage, exposure, uh, accusation, and truth. Amen. And he, he walked us through how, as believers, amen, that, that on the outside, we may have a lot of things going on. And, 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 and we know we love the Lord. Amen. And there's no doubt in my mind that those that are in the house... Uh, those that I have their attention in the house really love God and have gone through different things in their personal life, amen, struggles, challenges, but they, 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 they're resilient. They come back. They bounce back, uh, and, and, and they, they still love God. But sometimes... Well, I won't say sometimes, for the majority of the time, we can, we can, how can I say it? It's not that we're deceiving ourselves. But, but even the Bible talks about that, that is, it's, it's a very thin line. Because we hold truth to God and we love God and we confess our sins. Remember, and, and First John was it was a one and nine. Confess, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And He does all of that. But the reality is that when that first encounter is done. We're still left with the same mind. Yes, yes. So we don't have to do our salvation thing over. But we have to renew our mind yes. constantly. Yes. yes. And it's through the word of God that, that can transform our thinking. Because I can be new on the outside, but if I still think the way I think, I'm going to have challenges. There's no doubt in my mind that, that you completely love the Lord and there's nothing that you really wouldn't do for him. But it's, the Lord is not the problem. <laughs> it's me, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Standing in the need of prayers. Not just you, girl. Me too. Because of, of our mind. Because here's the deal. There's two of you. <laughs> Minimum two of you. Some of you guys got... <laughs> we won't go there. But the Bible talks about that there's always going to be a war. Because your flesh is a contradiction to your, your confession. Your flesh will always have an internal fight. But the problem is, self is smart. That rascal has been with you all of your life. Since you were born, self has been with you. All the time. When you go places, when you think things, self is taking notes. Oh, okay, I know you like this. Oh, I know you like that. Oh, you said what? Mm. <laughs> self won't say a thing, but it's taking notes. Because it's building up a case. That at the right time, at the right moment, is going to use its ammunition against you to, get, to try to discourage you just before a breakthrough. 
just before God is about to shift you. His was S. It's talked about self-sabotage. T.D. Jake says it like this. It's the enemy in a me. There is a constant struggle and fight. So, so we got to understand that it affects every last one of us. We don't have time to get into it. And this is one of the reasons why we're going to meet Friday night. But do you not know that locked within your interest or your personality or your gifting, it comes with its own self-sabotage? That's just the way it is. A leader, what is a leader? A leader is one that, that leads. But how he leads, there has, there, there's, part of it is he has to be in control. He has to be able to manage and control those, not control as in like a Gestapo kind of control, but he has to be in control. Because other than that, it'll be chaos. Does that make sense? So as a leader, I'm talking to all leaders. There is a part of you that, that demands control. But an immature leader that control can be self-sabotage. Or are you with me? And in that control is locked in, for example, don't be surprised, lust. Lust is locked in someone that is always controlling and it's not doesn't necessarily mean a, 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 a sexual lust or anything like that it's just control it's a lust for power a lust for this a lust for that i gotta have i gotta have so from an immature level it lingers inside of you but if you don't realize it you'll you, you, you'll dismiss it because, praise you, Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. Because, my wife don't like when I say, is that here's the deal? Your spirit, man, is perfect. So you can lift up your hands, you can give him glory, you can give him praise. Right? That's why the Bible said, don't be confused, your gift is without repentance. You can't rely on your gifting that, 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 that make you feel secure and safe as being in the arms of God. Because it does not. Are you with me? The anointing, we talked about this before. The anointing is, is, is not your anointing, it's God's anointing. So if you are doing the things God are, is saying, if you're saying the things that God is saying, God will anoint his word. He will anoint his purpose. He will anoint his plan. But you still can't be that confused to know that that locks you in. Does that make sense? Because once the anointing is gone, you just have flesh. You go back to your flesh. Ask Brother Balaam. What did God do? He, he anointed what? A donkey. He anointed a donkey. Because he needed to have... To get a, a message over to the God man. So don't, don't be so impressed. If you have an anointing, you're just on equal grounds with a donkey. <laughs> now, hear me out. I'm, I'm just overemphasizing, you know, we're not, we're, not, we're not underestimating the anointing and the power of God. 
the anointment. Because the anointing and the power of God breaks all yokes. But as you are under the anointing, you need to be applying the anointing. So that the yokes can be broken off of you. But if you are so out here because of your spirit being perfect, then you miss the hole in your soul. And you'll never reach to the level that God has for you. Because God is a holy God. And a holy God cannot go anywhere. Well, I'll put it this way. He can go anywhere he wants to, but he will not go. Now, we as earthen folks, we understand that the president of the United States can go anywhere, but he will not go anywhere. He will not go anywhere that has not been vetted out. Uh-huh. That has been, been, been went and prepared. Yeah. To receive him. God definitely will not go everywhere until the atmosphere has been prepared to receive his holiness. This wasn't even the the message, Lord. We was going to talk about uh, uh, Thanksgiving. (laughs) All right, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. But God said, this is what he spoke to me. He said, listen. He said, I'm about to elevate everything that I'm doing in the earth. And and most of it is because you guys been calling. You've been asking. And for those that have been faithful coming in at 915, 930, has been contending. Oh, you thought I forgot because I went out of town. Orders were given. Instructions were given. And this is just a side note. I won't even take an offering up for this one. (laughs) But when you are given orders, you are to stay in place and activating that order until you receive another order. So that means all those folks that were here should be still coming out. And contending because you had an assignment to contend for the favor, to contend for the soul, to contend for this nation, to contend for Baldwin Park, to contend for this church. You had an assignment, and so you should be still contending. Amen. Amen. Now I'm back over here. That's just so you know where you're going to be at next week. but he said listen you've been contending and I've heard your cry listen we can go all through scripture and we can see the hand of God and the move of God on his chosen folks unfortunately like them like us we've been disobedient we've been hard headed God has blessed us. And so we reward him, or they rewarded him, I'm not going to say you, by serving other gods or giving the credit to other gods. God brought, he said, listen, I'm sending you in the land not to mingle, but to conquer. Don't in, don't mingle, don't mingle, but you're in the world, but not of the world. You go and you, but what they did constantly They did their own thing. They served the other folks' God. They got sucked up with the culture. Sounds like us, America, today. Sucked up with the culture. Doing what the culture is saying. And God, time and time, he said, listen, okay, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be consequences. It's not my will, but there's going to be consequences because I've already set in motion principles and, 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 and things that cannot be broken laws that are that govern this world but anyway the point is he said listen i am going to a higher place that's not even correct he's already there in the higher place 
He, he said, listen, I'm going to allow you to come up to a higher place of where you are because I want to show the world. I want to show the nation. I want to show America that there is a God that is all powerful and that this is my nation that was given to me through covenant. But the Bible declared that these signs shall follow them that believe. The first thing he said was what? You would do what? <laughs> these signs will follow you that believe. You will do what first? Thank you. Cast out devil. Before you can do anything, there has to be a, a brokenness in the ground. The fallow ground has to be broken up. That, 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 that casting out devils, which is really setting the perimeters for open heaven. That's why we're meeting next Friday night. So we can cast out devils. And it's not necessarily those obvious devils where you can see. The, oh, ho, 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 ho. I'm not coming out. Yeah, yeah, we get that. You come out in Jesus name. But we're talking about that self-sabotage behavior that's locked within your personality, that's locked in your giftedness, that's locked in the things that you do, that, 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 that is hindering you from a free flow of what God wants to do. And he said, I'm taking you higher if you want to go, but you got you to gotta do some cleaning up. You got to cast out devils. There's some raising of the dead. Are, are, are you with me? So, it's, so, so the point is, in 2020, we want to be where God is. And each and every one of us that's here under the sound of my voice, you and you alone have the capacity to kick some devil butt. You and you alone have capacity to win thousands of people to the kingdom just by yourself. But collectively, when we get on one accord and we are walking congruent to heaven, the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that we declare line up to the word. Prophet Minerva said it becomes a key. Because you become, it's like having a, 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 what did you call it? It was like a sacred vessel. A vault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was a V in there somewhere. A vault. Got your tool belt of prayer. Got to know when and know how to pray and what to pray in order to unlock. Because you can be the one that can break free yeah. folks she read the scripture she said look if I could just find one just one that is faithful that to the things of God just so I can save the nation is there a one that will spend time this week in prayer and fasting so when we get together on Friday night, it will be like a melting of God's presence. When we walk into the house, his glory will drop in from heaven and saturate and bring us to the point where now we become one with what God is doing. 
And I promise you, he said it in the beginning of this year, and he hasn't stopped. I am looking for a dwelling place for my glory so I can unpack my, my stuff. Can I tell you, each and every one of us have the capacity and the ability for you to receive from God such an indwelling habitation of his presence. That your very presence become a, a place of authority. You become in the ranks when you step in the room. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Oh, and by the way, I know you too, Kim. What you messing with me for? Janice, I know you too. What are you messing with me for? I ain't doing nothing. Is it my time? Oh, and I know you, Stephanie. And Maurice and Ted, I know you. Why? Because you've been spending time with God, and now you become a... A seal. See, see, well, you, you miss all this stuff in class on Friday. <sighs> but I, 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 I'm just, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read this one verse so you, so you guys don't, don't get me. It's in Isaiah 22. And here, Isaiah had the challenge of, again, like the other prophets. Bringing the news to the folks, those stiff-necked folks that God has been talking to, to get right. I have, I have abundance for you. I have blessings for you. I'm in covenant agreement with Abraham. So there's things that, that, that I have to do, but you won't receive it. And so in, verse, in chapter 22, Verse number 20. I'll just start there and I'm reading. So everybody was just doing their own thing. Again, corruption. The whole culture was going left. But there was one person that was listening. He must have heard the class on, on, on Friday. But he said, if I could just find one. And I believe his name was Elka. He said, I'm the one. God said, I found one that I'm going to use to save the nation. And this is what he said. And this is what he's saying to you as the one. He said that I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle. See, that which he had for his people. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to, to Elk, and this is what I'm going to give him. And he, he said, and I will commit thy government into his hands. And I shall be the father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And here it is. He said, and the key of the house of David, I will lay upon his shoulder. I will lay it upon his shoulder. God is saying to you, if you dare to get right, if you dare to step in my ways, if you dare to listen, I will give that which I'm going to do for the nation that is that is corrupt and rejection. He said, I will give the government to you and I will get the key of the house of David and I will lay it on his shoulders. So he shall open and no one shall shut. That's the key. We talked about the key, getting positioned to be the key on Friday. And no one shall shut and he shall shut and no one shall open. Having the, the capacity to step on a scene that, that's closed, 
close to receiving what God is saying, close to the power. And you get your key from heaven and you put the key in. And now where there was a closed heaven, it becomes an open heaven. And the angels and, and, and all that become rushing in. And then verse number 23, it says, and I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. I will fasten him as a nail, as a peg in a sure place. God is saying, I have a sure place that if you elevate and you get where we need to go, I will nail you and I will peg you in that place remember the word earlier this year he said that i'm uplifting i'm i'm preparing a place so i can move you to so i can nail you in place and he shall be the glorious throne to his father's house in other words he shall receive my glory that will be the glory that is given out from the house. We didn't even talk about 2020, but 2020 is coming up. In the year, God's covenant release. God's glory being released. And he is honoring every covenant agreement. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offsprings and the issue, all vessels of small quantities from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of Phagon. Phagon. We're going to just stop right here. Today's message was to be a Thanksgiving message. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. But just since, because I put it in my notes, I'll just say it quickly and I'm done. Thanksgiving. It is an annual holiday in the United States and Canada, celebrating the harvest of others' uh, blessing of the past. Americans generally believe that their Thanksgiving is a model from 1621, the harvest feast shared by the English colonists, the pilgrims, there at Plymouth with, it, with the, baby, you're going to have to help me, Wakpanoe. Wak Yes, tribe. Wapanoe. But the cool thing about it is when we talk about uh, thanks, we talk about expression of gratitude. When you thank something, there is an expression of gratitude. And we're back at that other word, giving. And we're wrapping this up. Giving to put into possession of another for his or her use. So in other words, an expression of gratitude by putting in possession that what you give to the receiver for their use. Did you get that? And then I gave you an example, Psalm 69 and 30 said, I will praise the name of God with a song and with and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. So what that means is this. I will give praise for the name of God. So first of all, before you do that, you got to figure out what name 
that you're going to give him praise because he has multiple names. Yeah. See, oftentimes we just go, we, 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 we pray just, you know, just, just random stuff, even though we, yeah. but there is, there is a pattern. There is, there is, there is a pattern to prayer in which you can get in a lot faster. And, and, and Thanksgiving gives us a tool to do that. He said, so if you're, you're Thanksgiving that we sit in this, he said, so uh, you have to praise his name of God. You need to find out which name he's uh, you're going to do. And you have. And turn that into a song. So I will praise the name of God with a song. So what you're saying is, I'm going to go before his presence. Figuring out whatever name it is. Yahweh. Whatever her name is, El Shaddai. And I'm going to make it a song. Elohim. You know, make it a song. And I will magnify him. I will make him big. So when we talk about Thanksgiving and we'll be having our Thanksgiving meal and, and you're going in the season of Thanksgiving, you have to know that Thanksgiving is a gratitude, appreciation. And you show it by giving something. And you give it to them to do what they bid. So our prayer today is that we give him thanks with the attitude of gratitude. Think about what he's done for us this year and all the things he's done for us. Having an attitude of gratitude. And I'm going to give you myself. So you can do with me whatever you want to do. That's the ultimate thanksgiving. You can stand to your feet. Good to have Ted in the house. And I, I don't just say that because to say that. But we are thankful. So that means I have to show an attitude of gratitude for him being in the house, for you being in the house. An attitude of gratitude. I must be willing to give you something. And if I'm sensitive to the spirit in tune with heaven, heaven, Holy Spirit will instruct whatever that is. So, Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for your word. In other words, we have an attitude of gratitude for the word that you spoke today to us. And, Father, we decree and declare that this word will fall on good ground, good soil. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just seal it into our spirit, man. And Father God, we just thank you for, even on next week, the change, the shift, those that will be consecrating themselves, to hear from you, to elevate to the place that we as a church will come up higher. Can I tell you, God is smiling right now <laughs> because he can see already those that are going to be obedient and step it up. And God is saying, I have it all ready and prepared. Turn off the television sets. Turn off the distractions. And come before me. 
this week. And watch and see, I will open up revelation, knowledge. For there's some things that I want to release that has not been released in the earth. That was set aside for such a time as this. But this is not just any time. This is the time that a, a resounding vibration sound will touch my throne room. And the perfect example, this is me now, this is a perfect example that I can see. You know, if you've ever been to those, those carnivals or those, 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 those festivals, and they got this one machine, it is, it's, they got the hammer, and that based on the weight that you hit, yeah. it goes up. Uh -huh. But you don't win until it goes up high enough to hit the bell. Yeah. So God is saying that there's some things that I want to release. But the prayers, the, the, the energy has not reached yet to the level that will release it. God is saying, I'm ready to release it. It's up to us. It's up to you. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want a supernatural manifestation of my glory? That will not just come and go, but will dwell. I'm looking for just one. And I'll make it happen. Before, was it the, was it five or the four minute mile? Was it four minute mile? was broken. The whole world said it was impossible. There's no way a human being can run fast enough to do a mile in four minutes. Impossible. We weren't made that way. All it took was one. When that one finally broke, I think it was only a couple weeks later, another one broke it. Then another one broke it. Now everybody is like, I can't break it, but <laughs> you see, so he's looking for one that will dare to consecrate themselves in such a high level way that will reach my heaven that my glory will shatter. And then watch me move on another dimension in this earth. We give you honor, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen.